record on the screen. All right. So I, uh, it is true that uh, the month of December is student choice. Um, and I got some suggestions. And what I wanted to do was kind of talk to you guys about what makes a good art subject for, uh, we're going to be doing this guy. But I want you, why, I want us to talk about like why the subjects that you sent were a little bit, um, I just want you to think about them as you're sending them. And there are a couple of ways to evaluate a subject. Um, Paul started by sending us this. Yeah, it's very pretty, <laughs> but there's a lot going on here. Can you see that? I want yeah. you to look at how many colors you'd have to mix. And I want you to see like how complex this is going to be in terms of painting. Even if I look at it as a black and white, look at all the different changes. Wow, that's a lot of value. It's a lot of value differentiations. How are you going to like do all of this? So when you're talking about a two hour subject, right? We have two hours. You're going to spend about an hour drawing and an hour painting. So I want you thinking about that. Um, Mariana sent in this one. I'm going to show it to you in color. Mariana, I want to ask you to count how many spots are on the neck. Go ahead. <laughs> Keep going. When you're done, let us know. <laughs> Point made. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not like these are equal, even spots. These all have their own shape and their relationships to each other. You're going to spend a lot of time working on this. There's also a lot of complexity in here, but you'll notice I picked something kind of similar. And if you want to, you can use some of these ideas for, for painting it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you don't have to stick with the colors on this guy are pretty mild right so i would totally say you will put i'll put this up as an inspiration for you to do whatever you want to when you want to start adding color but notice one two three four five six on the neck maybe seven and then like maybe five here so this makes things easier but it's not just that there is very good good if we're looking at the black and white there's good value uh, differentiation. So what do I mean by that, Lisa? What's good value differentiation? You can see clearly the different values, right? They don't. And what are values? Values are like the intensity of the color, the dark to light. No, light the lighter darkness of the color. Intensity is actually a different thing. That's called oh. um, the lightness or darkness of any color. So good paintings have contrast. That means they have a lot of high, they have dark areas, they have light areas, and that those are very distinct and easy to see. If you look at this one, it's not that, con they're not that there's not that much contrast. Can you see that? Everything's kind of the same value, which flattens it and makes it look less interesting. Over here, I've actually got pretty distinct you can see the lights coming from this side so this side of the face is darker and this side of the face is lighter and there's some wonderful lights that will help us shape our darks so that's another thing we look for so if you are not sure you can always turn your picture into a black and white like i did here so that you can really see yeah the colors are awfully pretty but it's kind of a problematic painting because everything's kind of the same, there's a lot of the same color. There's a lot of the same. The light isn't very distinctly lighting light and dark areas. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, and we can do the same thing here. I mean, Paul gave me what well, I told Paul it was too complicated. He put this out. I want you to look at this in black and white. This is basically all the same. <laughs> like, imagine trying to draw, paint, draw and paint this with very little light and dark differentiation. I didn't um, notice that. I just thought it was- I want you I to notice that. Don't send me shit that we can't paint. <laughs> well, no, because I, see, I thought the colors, it was not- I, I didn't know, you really weren't. So this is what I'm trying to point- I just thought point. the color was gray. Right. And then I could just- uh, uh, So, yeah, so it's now. not just about the color, it's about the contrast right? It's about the lights and the darks. 
and and where you guys are skill level you're beginners right it's the same with trying to do a face uh a faces are a whole thing if you guys want to we can totally turn this class into a face drawing class starting in january that will be full on you will spend months learning how to do that it's a whole thing it's it's not a beginner subject it doesn't mean that as beginners you can't start to study it but it's it's whole it's not easy and it's a whole thing so i want you when you're thinking about and i want you to still send me stuff but i want you when you're thinking about it and we're going to look at this guy later for color ideas and background i want you to be clear on a what can we do in two hours and b what can we do with your skill level right what can we do with beginner skill level and also and that's not a diss in any way right that's not a diss in any way that's not a, i'm just saying we have a skill level and what has good contrast and what is kind of a simple what has got a kind of simple enough shapes that we can you know we can get into it does that does that make sense no yay no are you mad is there are people mad about that are people feeling pleasure i won't no because I, 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 I this is good because i you know i was taking pictures when i was traveling and trying to figure out what would make a good picture and um mm -hmm. It's harder than it. It's harder than it looks. Yeah. Well, right? yeah. A lot of. I mean, a lot of pictures I took. I thought this is beautiful, but I doubt I can paint it. <laughs> well, you should put it into. Sometimes you can take a picture and cut it down and make it more simple. And and really, the test is to turn it into a black and white on your camera. You know, there's a filter that does that. Just mm -hmm. turn it into a black and white, and look at how how uh, how much contrast there is. And the subject here, and speaking of, we're gonna get started. So I'm gonna draw this shape here. He is really a cutie. I love these giraffes. They are so odd looking, aren't they? They're like the craziest looking beasts. Um, yeah, no, it's a whole thing, right? It's a skill level. We get excited. We want to do things. We see color. We get excited. What I want you guys to do is start to evaluate what is an actual good subject for a painting, right? Because a painting is not a photograph. So it's got to, and we are stuck in a painting with uh, dealing with shape, contrast, right? And brush strokes, right? That's what we have. That's the only thing we have to create kind of excitement and interest right in a subject so um so let's see so and i was gonna find before i do this i'm gonna find the halfway point here nope a little higher here nope up a little higher one God, where's my game face? Um, okay, I'm gonna mark this with a different color so you can really see it. So here is the halfway point of this line. If we go from the top to the bottom of the giraffe, so you should start, if I was you, I would start at the bottom of the paper, draw up, it doesn't really matter how high up you go, because we'll do proportional measuring later. But know that at the top, you're going to sketch in your horns, which are the highest part of the giraffe. And that at the halfway point, which you can get by using a ruler, that's pretty much, or you can do what I'm doing. If you can see here, I'm putting a little mark where I think the halfway point is, and I'm taking my, I can either take my pencil and see, is it half the same here as it is here to the bottom, or do I need to move it a little bit? So, and then I see that halfway here, if I were to draw all the way across, Now I'm drawing things that aren't even there, but what this will help you do is see kind of where things are in relation to each other. 
So if I check this measurement, uh, it's a little bit higher. He's a little bit wider across, just a little bit than the halfway point. Can you see that? So if I came here and I made my pencil do about the same thing at the halfway. Here. And I went across working here. Marking here, and then I checked it. Oh, and let's see. One, yeah, it's about equal. About about equal on either sides. These are my beginning marks. And you don't have to draw this all the way in. I'm going to draw it so you can see it. Well, yeah, if I draw it all the way in. I'll erase it later. And then I can even bring this line up here kind of to just show me where the ears are. If I really want to get fancy, I can do this. So I'm creating kind of an envelope. This seems like a backwards way of drawing, doesn't it? But it isn't. And so I've got this little kind of house here with a flat top, right? That kind of helps me place where things are. So go ahead and start with that shape. I know my whole job is to show you how to do it in a way you wouldn't think of, right? On your own. Um, but this is how an artist thinks. As an artist is starting to construct, we're always thinking in relation, what things are in relation to everywhere else. So let me take a picture of this. What's Diana doing, by the way? Oops. She is at um, a documentary screening that um, friends of hers uh, did a documentary. Oh, yeah? OK. Well, eventually, she, she does sometimes have to get out here. So I'm going to send this over so you guys can see what my sketch looks like. And I'm also going to send this over. That's about right. I see I'm just checking. I'm not really checking whether these match because I'm not trying to draw them the same size. I'm just checking to see whether my proportions match. I could do this twice the size, three times the size, or I could do this smaller. It's more about proportions than anything else. So when you've got it, send it over. Yeah, I think it would be really fun. I agree with you, Mariana. I think it would be really fun to have a journaling workshop. And I know just the person to teach it. I think you guys would love her. So I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I just need to find a good way, a good place to do it. A good time. just to do more fun one-off stuff. So like, because I feel like this is the kind of thing you kind of need to commit to, they, you know, and there are people who will do that. Okay. Paul, I, you know, Paul, this is at the halfway point. This is halfway up this. You have it way higher. Please bring this. This comes at the exact halfway point of this line. Okay. 
You can widen just a little bit, Lisa, here, a little bit okay. on either side. Mm -hmm. This is literally halfway. That's weird. There's this weird lag on, uh, on my uh, laptop. I don't know why it's slow today. Okay. Um, Paul? Yep. From the top to the bottom line, this is the halfway point. Please measure more carefully. That's exactly halfway. It is not. Not even close. It's at an angle, so let me try it. Uh, it's not even from an angle. I, it's not even close. I'm sorry, friend. You're not getting it. Oh, you're right. Uh huh. <laughs> Dude, I do this every day, eight hours a day. You know what it is? I have this. Home... <laughs> no, you know what it is? I have this Home Depot ruler. I got to get a new ruler because it's like it's only seven inches. So I can't, you know, it's hard for me to measure. So you have to evaluate. You have to go using, do, don't use numbers. Use, uh, don't use numbers. Use, be it too. learn to eyeball. Use your fingers, use your pencil, learn to eyeball. Uh, are we ready to go on? Okay. So once we've got this, right, then we can sketch that outer shapes. Now pay attention here, because there's some fantastic negative shapes that will really help. But we're not really doing any inner lines, right? We're just doing the outer lines. So here, I can see that he's kind of, I feel like this is about where he starts and he's closer on this side. So as I start to sketch this shape, is that right? Yeah, this is about right. I'm paying attention to the outer yeah, shapes, yeah. the as well as the inner ones. I might have to move this a little bit out. Right? I'm paying attention to the negative space. So what is the negative space? Mariana, do you remember? What's the negative space? The space that it is between the lines, the outer lines. The, sa the, the, space, the space that is not the object, yeah. right? So you yeah. have to get this shape that's between the horns as right as, as well as the shape between the ear and the horn, right? Okay. So yeah, so negative space can be really helpful for making your drawings better. I love negative space. It helps a lot, isn't it? It's like a magic trick. Yeah. It really is. Once you get it, it's like, oh, this is amazing. Because these horns, because of the way we're looking at this guy, he's not exactly straight on. Right? Like this shape. Uh, I think it's more like this. Maybe I bring this down a little bit more. This kind of comes up and out like that. Yeah. yeah, see how I'm using the negative space to kind of shape my thing? I'm kind of working under, I have the uh, thing in a kind of a strange shape, so. And then here, down here too, without getting into too much detail, 
it's really mostly just straight. I might have to change some things. One, two, three. Ah, that's nice. One, two, three. So I could see that if I were to divide this width into thirds, one third is here and two thirds are here. Oh, maybe over here then. I got a little bit farther. Notice I'm not getting into too much of that bumpy detail. We can do that later. Here, I'll take a picture. Right now, it looks like a little, I don't know, a hand puppet in a box. <laughs> this is why nobody, oops, no, I don't want a video. This is why nobody ever does this. You know, this is why people resist learning to do this. Because it's so weird looking. <laughs> For a long time, it's really weird looking. And you'll see, as much as I'm like, hey, I do this eight hours a day, every day for 20 years, I still am not getting things right. Oops, dang it. Oh, well. Um, I mix well with the watercolor, but we'll just work around it. And then the last thing I'll do, let's see, I'm gonna do that. So this is nice. This is kind of like a little triangle here. Do you see how I'm using really the distance that the ears are to help shape the bottom? Everything. So yeah, actually, this is a phenomenal exercise in negative space. This is all about negative space. Do you guys see how I did this? So I took this line. So this line, which we've already set and established. Give me just a second, guys. <clears throat> It's for you. If you do want it. And look, if you need it, just a bit. I saw it work out here. And it's so cute. All right, enjoy, enjoy. All right. So let's see here. So let me show you how this would work. So this, let's see, this would work a little bit like I think I would locate this spot knowing that it kind of slants in a little bit like that. And then I would see, oh, the neck just meets that spot there. Can you see that? Did you guys see how I did that? And then here, I can see that the neck kind of comes over here. So then I can do this, right? And then, straight down. We may have to work these out a little bit. It looks weird, I, I won't lie. But I promise you it's more right than wrong. <laughs> so best to kind of locate where you think the neck is, which is just a little bit in from the ear, right? If I put my, if I went straight down like this, so a little bit in. Maybe it's even a little bit further in. Well, anyway, I, this is the kind of thing 
drawing is about kind of laying things down and then establishing where things are. And then you can kind of fiddle around with that. You'll see that the difference between getting it right and not right, quote unquote, is very minor. Better, Paul. Paul, ears go all the way out to this edge. That's why we have it there, all the way out. Send this in. You guys can hear me, right? Oh, Mariana, you got me all. I just keep muting because I have this annoying program that beeps every now and then on my computer that I can't oh, okay. figure out. Okay. So, but I'm here. <laughs> I don't want to annoy you guys. And think about what else you guys and send me pictures. I, I mean, I will not. And then we should. There's other things to discuss about this class, which is what you guys want to do in January. If you want to keep doing watercolor, I'll totally keep doing watercolor. But if you want to go to some other subject, we can do that too. If you want to do faces, do you want to, Mariana? If you want to, it is a wonderful practice. I mean, it's a little frustrating. And maybe figure drawing might be nice. Uh, Lisa's laughing. Both maybe of those are a lot frustrating. They're no. really <laughs> frustrating. They're hardcore. They they're are definitely hardcore. hardcore so. <laughs> it was like a little frustrating. <laughs> a little frustrating. They're entirely no, but frustrating. They they are um you learn a lot from them you definitely right? learn a lot yeah and now i'm sketching in some of the inner shapes starting with the ears and those funny little humps we can continue to use <laughs> i just love what a face this is just a phenomenal we can continue to use halfway points to help us. If you want to, you can find like, I'm gonna guess it's about here. Yeah, the halfway point is here. If you were to run of this, of this line, right? So if you were to run, um, if you were to run a line straight across, notice that the eyes go under the halfway point. Can you see that? So the halfway point, of the face here is exactly my halfway point. It's exactly the top of the eye line. That'll help you kind of place things. So how does that pencil out? It pencils out here. Right? Which means I think I need to bring my ear down a little bit more. And how do I know that? Because I know that if I were to run a line across, we can also probably just benefit from beginning drawing as well. I think that, I mean, we're doing a lot of that anyway. So you can see that I won kind of comes here. Did you see how I pulled my ear down? Here was the original line. And I did that because I could see that my eye kind of lines up. And then there's this funny little bump over the top of his head. It goes up like this and down like that. What a strange looking beast. Strange, 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 strange. Right, I'm drawing this out here. So the other eye is kind of all the way over here. And it's a little bit of different shape too. So look at how far apart the eyes are. Oh, 
I didn't notice that. Yeah, the, the it's like a. Um, Yeah, it's like a what? Star Wars character, you know, with the, the eyes on, you know. They are odd looking beasts. So weird. Notice that the nose is all on the right side and the mouth. And so now I can start to kind of shape. See how I'm kind of pulling in and narrowing the, shape, the face a little bit. <laughs> I haven't even got to this to the spots yet. We haven't even got there yet. So all these guidelines and measurements I'm establishing are helping me kind of uh, figure out where things are. Nobody really wants to do that in art. When you first start out, people are very impatient with this process. They're like, and I would put another little line here because this is light and you're going to want that light. But once you start to attune yourself to these relationships, you'll see that they're absolutely critical. I can see that my, I need to bring my neck in further. There we go. Maybe about like there. So, you know, I'm not getting this completely right myself, but notice how I'm adjusting as I start to establish things that are correct. So this shaped, this eye is kind of shaped like that. And this eye is shaped like that. They have different shapes. If you want to, you can draw in these funky little zigzag darts in the ears. And then over the top here is a little eyebrow. Remember, we're going to preserve our whites. So any area that's white, like here, we don't, in watercolor, we don't paint it. If we were painting in acrylic, we would totally get those beautiful darks in and then lay our lights on top. But we can't really do that with watercolor. There's some kind of neat white shapes around the nose too. I know I'm going a little fast. I'm just trying to get it done so I can really take a good look at your guys' drawings. Before we even get into the spots. Is this, whose is this? Oh, that's Mariana's. Is that yours, Mariana, or is that Victor's? I can't see. Uh, that's mine. Okay, hold on. One, two, one, two. All right, so you're gonna wanna scoot your face a little bit closer to this edge on this side and a little bit wider over here. Okay. One, two, three. Can you show them time? Yeah, Victor, can you unbox with this one? Yeah, that looks pretty good. Good job with these shapes, Mariana. Good job. Really good job. I can see you working on them. Paul, uh, bring these right to the edge. And this one's good. I think the nose needs, the nose isn't touching this line, it's to the right. But you're starting to get there. He's looking giraffe-like.
I sent, sent you mine. Sorry, I think you'll click on it to see. Yeah, I, so what I wanted to show you, Lisa, is that on this side, it's mm -hmm. one third, and on this side, it's almost two thirds. It's uh, so this side is almost twice the length of this side. Okay. And also, Lisa, look at this shape here. Okay. Look at where what you've done. You're like right up against it. Mm -hmm. This is a bigger shape here. There's more okay. space. It's also true here. No, this one's not bad. Something happened over here on this side. You, I think you went too far down. Oh yeah, okay. yeah. True, right? So this is more of an across thing. Look at this shape. There's a actual space, horizontal line here. Oh, yeah. yeah, which you're missing, which also directs this shape here, which yeah. is why you're going down like that instead of across. Okay. <clears throat> what would you guys like to do? Do you think you'd like to stay in watercolor for a while longer? What do you want to do? What do you want to learn? Drawing? I, I would like to go uh, try some more drawing, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I still need a lot of drawing practice. Yes, it has been Like the while. drawing is hard enough and then and then I get all, find the drawing hard and then I got to mix the paints for the watercolor and I just think, oh wow. Yeah, I'd also like to go do acrylics just because like watercolor and drawing is are easy, but acrylic is like, it's, Prep is tough for that and cleaning up is tougher. Yeah. So I want to get used to that. All right. All right. Mariana, what about you? What are you feeling like? I would like to see this class do. I, I like watercolor and I like portraits. So I don't know if to also try to, try to take the portrait class. Um, Separately. Okay. Yeah. The right now portraits is on Friday, like at ten a.m. your time. That yeah, that's impossible for me. Yeah, but I'm gonna. It's gonna be changing. So I'll let you know. It's gonna be changing. I mean, sure. it's also possible I could take it to this class. I could make this class the portrait class. I know it's hard, you guys, but maybe it's places like no. <laughs> But why not challenge yourself, right? Because it's possible that if we did portraits for a while, um, some of you could add in painting into those. That would be kind of neat, right? All right, I'm gonna think about it. I've yeah, got the like design. I said, I, I, I'm daunted by faces, but I'm also daunted by watercolors and the mix. Right, truthfully, paints, you're kind like of just, jaunted by just, it all, right? <laughs> so. There you go. It's so, all daunting. It's all daunting. So, and then if you want to, you can add in the dots. Let me see if I can draw them in. So let's see, they're like here. And remember, Negative space is super important between the dots because that's the neck. Boy, that neck is interesting also. Yep, you got to pay attention to these in kind of relation to. Yeah, it's like that wrinkly things. dog, you know, that wrinkly dog. Yeah. Notice that I'm kind of looking at the light space and also kind of where does the spot, is the spot on either side of the line?
Yeah, he's got this little chin thing, but I, I don't know how much we have to pay attention to that. Whoops. I have been dying to teach a watercolor portrait class, actually. I have actually been longing to. I'm hoping we'll get into a couple of them on Friday. So we'll talk about it. It all depends on, I'd like to have one of each class going. So it depends on what the other classes want to do, but I'm open to a bunch of different things here. There's that. And you notice, um, I, you know, I'm learning a lot at the moment. Uh, I'm working on a big giant painting. It's like eight feet tall and uh, it's a commission and it's of a bridge I've painted like about a hundred times. I'm not gonna say the bridge is easy. Bridges are never easy because they have lots of little details, but like, one of the things that I'm finding really interesting about this, but this painting is challenging because it's so big. And one of the things I found is that I have to break it into little sections and only work on one section at a time. Like, so I go in and work on it and it's just one little section. Um, I think the same about this giraffe. I think I'm dealing with pieces, right? The outer shapes first, then where are the features now only now i'm getting to the 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 dots on the neck and then later once i've kind of locked that in i'm going to get to the dots uh, i'm going to get to the dots on the face but if i try to do it all at once it overwhelms me so i just like to break these jobs into little pieces I'll be right back. You know, having said that bases are difficult, I am going to try to come up with a watercolor face exercise that is doable in this class before the end of the year in December. Would you guys be up for trying it? Just a simple one, a very simplified version. I'm sorry, I was getting water. What, a simplified version of what? Oh, you know, the more I think about it, Mariana sent over this really cool watercolor face. And at first I was like, no, there's no way we can do that. And now, but the, now the more I look at it, the more I want to try it. So now I'm thinking I may try to do a very simplified face exercise um, where we can watercolor paint before the end of the year. Would you guys be up for trying it if I could, if I could do it? It sure. won't necessarily be that one, Mariana, because that one was quite complex, but um, I think I can do something. Would you be up for it, for trying it? Totally. All right, I'm gonna try. Um, Why not? Why not? Um, how are you my going? It might be fun to do, okay, I'm gonna try it. Let me see what I can come up with. Just depends on what I can find that I can simplify. It might actually be kind of interesting. By the way, I'm kind of pulling, once I've got my lines in place, I can kind of pull out, erase the extra pencil lines. <laughs> Sorry, it's making it look like there's an earthquake. So when you've gotten to this point, go ahead and send it over to me. So 
such an odd little beastie. Is anybody drinking a glass of wine yet? <laughs> I guess it's all after five for us. No, sparkling water, but yeah, I can't really it's even do it anywhere. Lisa, it looked like that was a nice trip you went on. Yeah, it was, um, it was, it was nice to get away and get a change of scenery. Mm, looked really beautiful. Yeah, no, it is. It's, the, the view is incredible. It's, it's way out in the middle of nowhere. It's very hard to get to, but once you get but there. That's the great. point, right? right I <laughs> guess so, yeah. It's very hard to get to. You, did you get any pictures of the dock? I the did. View? Yes. Okay. Can I you have send a ton. those across the thread before the end of class? I'd like to see oh, a couple. Oh, sure. Just when you're when you're done drawing, we'll get the drawing. Well, do you papers. want? Okay, here's my question. Do you want the dock straight ahead, looking at the dock, or at an angle? Straight ahead. Okay. So dock going out. I think that would be the those would be the best one. Okay. Because I have a feeling that would be a really neat one to try drawing to. Okay. All right. Just let me get caught up on my giraffe here. There you go, Paul. He's coming along now. I have a bad feeling it's going to end up like the sheep. <laughs> Remember my sheep? The pace was just like so wide. No, long, you know, he's better off. He's better than it was at the beginning. You're starting to get there. And now you'll notice that sort of half the face, what you really want to do it's kind of sketching. Let's see, I'm going to put the lines back in so you can see there's this kind of shape here. And a shape here and one here. And then there's this kind of diamond. Well, no, it's not a diamond, it's a triangle. What a strange, let's be close. So really what we're trying to do is preserve the lights, which is kind of this line here. That's what we really want to do is make sure that we keep the lights because we're going to not paint that. There's also a little part of this eye that we're not going to paint. It's light up here. Notice also that it's kind of, there's kind of a darky medium happening here and a lighter medium happening in here. Sketching these shapes.
They're mostly triangles. Leah, I'm, I'm not going to take a cigarette break, but I'm going to go get a cup of uh, cup of Earl Grey. Okay, we'll be here. Is that okay? That's okay. okay. You're excused. Thank you. You know, you could have totally done it and not told me. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. What is Zoom etiquette anyway? <laughs> right. These matters, right? Like um i don't think we care at this point we're all just like ah. totally i'm gonna go get some water actually be right back Okay, send your drawings. When you think your drawing is at this point, we can start painting. I just sent you mine. I don't have the spots yet, but I think I have everything else. Oh yeah, it's looking great, Lisa. Good job. He's cute. Yeah. So cute. He's cute. cute. There's a little bit, if you can see here, there's a little bit more of a dip happening i just okay. didn't get it in yet see how okay. this is kind of darker bits if you yeah. want to you can even shape it more okay so looking good pause is looking good this is looking good when you're ready send it well, over mariana to tell you you know i did so i did the class on saturday where we drew the cat right uh -huh. and i was at with my mother-in-law my husband and his whole side of the family, they are very artistic. And right. I, I think it all just comes to them naturally. I know we've talked about that and that is not necessarily the case, but anyway, I'm, so I'm like, oh, you know, here's my cat, whatever. And she like pulls out these amazing drawings that my husband did when he was in like seventh grade. And I was like, oh my God. Okay, well, <laughs> here's my little cat. <laughs> you should join. I know. No, he, I, I, can't, I keep asking them, did you take lessons? How did you learn this? And they're all like, oh, we're just everybody on our side of the family is just really good at art. And I, it drives me crazy, but I will keep plugging along. Okay, so yes, Mariana, something, his, can you see, feel there's something a little bit off about the face? Can you it's see wider it? Wider than it should be. It's wider way. than it should be. So uh, what we need to do <laughs> is so you you if you did okay so um, I believe that what you did is make the face you made his face the eye length as wide as this whole thing. Mm -hmm. 
And really this width is about, the width from here to here is about half that. So can you reduce this by half? Can you see this? So your yeah. eyes are here. Yeah. And that's what happened. So really the eye length needs to cut the eye, the width from eye to eye is only a little bit, it's really only half of the half of this half, half of this part, half of this line from here to, from here to here. So find out where that width is, and then you'll get the right, and then let's see. Oh yeah. And the other thing, although he's kind of cute in a sort of caricature-y way, you know what I mean? Like he kind of looks like a cartoon giraffe. Um, the other thing I'm looking at is I think he got too wide here with the ears. So I'm, I'm checking that measurement. Oh yeah. So this width, I want you to return to these width. Right? This width, which is where the ears are, when you go back to this box that you were supposed to kind of contain your drawing in, this is only a little bit, a little bit higher than halfway up the height. If you look at yours, you'll see. It's the entire giraffe. So you basically, your width is the same as the height, the entire height, rather than half the height. Do you see that? Yeah. Yep. How did that happen? I didn't see, did you just expand it out? No. I think I just, as you said, I went from the eyes down vertically. And instead of narrowing like this, I just made it totally erect. You made was, the eye width this width is what you did. The width yes, between did. the eyes became yeah, this width. That's what I did. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. But I, now I can see where you have your nose, and I totally see that my nose was not in the correct place. So, I'm, but it's not so hard. I mean, redo the. the, the yeah, nose. I think you can just um, bring in this. So come back here, and here I'm going to sketch on your drawing. So now you're going to bring, let's see, from here to here. This eye starts here. I'm going to here. It's like this. I'm going to sketch it and show you where everything is. Yeah, it looks better now. But yeah, and I'll show you too. You, I think what happened is you drew uh, two, you drew, you just, it kept expanding out. Wait. Okay. Yeah. Um, if you'll, I'm, I know this is going to be kind of gross, but there's kind of where everything should be. Can you see the blue lines I drew on top of your drawing? I just sent it across the thread. Let me see. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Oh, I see what you did. I see. I see where you went wrong because your shapes weren't so bad here. It was here. You, yep, I see exactly what happened. Okay. <laughs> you basically expanded everything along here. You just made yeah. this part too wide. Yep. Yep. So that's kind of where I'm looking at the measurements. This measurement should be the same as this. The, 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 the width from ear to ear should be the same as the pretty much the same as the half the height. Here to here. Here, here. And then the eyes come in from there. Uh, 
I read it and let me see if this is better. I don't think I can redo it again entirely, but you know, I don't want you to redo it. I want you to learn how to fix it. This is what this is part of what we did. And don't worry about this. It's a very con I mean, it's really common. You know what they say about drawing? They say if you make uh, a 10,000 mistakes, you will be a good drawer. So we actually aim for as many mistakes as possible in one lesson. <laughs> so <laughs> the more you do, the better you get at drawing. Yeah, this is better. It's hard better. for, it's hard for, uh, the only people who don't really do well in drawing lessons are perfectionists, are people who have their drawings perfect on the first go. Um, the desire to kind of quit in the middle and start over again is something I want you to avoid as much as possible. Let's see. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, Lisa, looking great. Looking great. Um, send it over, Mariana. I'd love to see it. Why have I not seen it? Did you fix it? I did. Why am I not seeing it? Send it now. Oh, right. Okay, sorry. I thought you said you'd already sent it. Um, the people who really struggle to draw, to do art, and the ones who quit are the ones who want to be perfect. So they want to lay every line down and not be wrong. And that's impossible. So, oh, much better. Yeah, yeah, Mariana. Yeah, yeah. This is great. Wonderful. You totally fixed it. It's much better. Okay, Paul, it's looking good. All right, are we ready to start adding some color in? We're going to, I'm going to have this here. But I'm also going to send you this. I'm going to send you this guy across the thread so that if you get ideas about color and you want to use these colors and well i'll work a little bit on on helping you mix these kind of colors in with your giraffe so we can brighten him up a little bit make him a little bit more colorful and i would also urge you to really um push the uh push the color um play with the color a little bit so i'll talk to you about color Hang on, I've got my little color thing here. Come up a little bit higher. There we go. Um, but I, it would be fun to kind of get a little bit more of this color happening. So we're going to start with the darkest areas, which, uh, which is generally a good idea with watercolor. It's a good idea to start with the darkest areas. I've been doing so much demo painting in so many places. My none of my equipment is in the normal in its normal spots. Let's see here. All right, I'm gonna start with a fairly small brush. Uh, this is the brush I usually like to start with. I got these two brushes. Can you guys see them? So I'm gonna start with yes. a fairly small brush. Uh, actually, maybe I'll start with the darker. Oh, I'll start with a bigger brush. Um, and, and we're going to kind of try to mix these dark colors, almost black, but with some beautiful sort of brown bits in them. So I like to start with a bit of, I'll take a picture of this. My basic dark, my kind of go-to dark consistently is burnt umber. Oh, and I've got water, which I'm dipping my brush into. If you want me to, I can show you, but you can see this is why it's getting wet. I'm dipping my brush in the water. And then ultramarine blue. 
So it makes, when you mix ultramarine blue and burnt umber, burnt umber is, is kind of this beautiful rich brown and ultramarine blue is kind of a warm, dark. You'll get, uh, and I'm just gonna use this. I, sorry, I have an area over here I'm gonna use for testing. You can see it's kind of this cocoa-y color, brown, and it's, you know, it needs to go darker, but we all need to start with something. And I want you to observe that in this, you know, you can use a smaller brush if you want to. I'm using a little flat. So burnt umber and ultramarine blue is sort of the classic dark. And you'll also see here, there's a little bit of a light edge. So there's his lashes that kind of come out like that. There's the dark of the eye. There's a little light edge where the lid is. And then there's more lashes. And then up here is a little dark spot. So you wanna leave a little bit of light if you can. I'm dipping my brush in the water again. I'm getting more ultramarine blue. I'm coming over here. Here on this side, you can really see the light bottom lid. So try to leave that unpainted and go underneath it. So you can leave it kind of light, go underneath with the dark. Up here, and then there's this zigzaggy dark. I know this isn't exactly the dark that you want, but it's good. Uh, watercolor is something that we layer. Got little tips up here. And then it's also kind of dark. Notice I'm kind of moving around and hitting up all the darks that I can. Just a couple of lines here. And then down here. This dark too. I think that's it for the dark area. The darkest area. Notice how quickly the giraffe starts to come together. As you lay your darks down. Now I am testing on here because I don't really have any room here. I wonder if I can just bring this up a little bit higher. Oh, no, damn you, no, no. <sighs> Sorry, you guys. Come on. There we go. I'm just trying to bring this up high enough so I can show you. But you should have a little piece of paper where you're doing your testing. I'm doing it here on the side, but you would maybe want to have a separate piece of paper like maybe right here, down here. See, I'm, tr I'm struggling to get this high enough so you can actually see my whole workstation. There we go, that's a little bit better. So here's a little bit of the... Can probably do this today. This is a separate paper for testing. There we go. Now you can kind of see all of it. So 
So again, I'll put those colors on here. It's ultramarine blue plus burnt umber equals a kind of lovely dark. It's not the only way to mix a dark, but it's my favorite. I have a question on the color. Um, in the actual photo, those areas look black, not brown. Yeah, but we're going to get there. Okay. You can't get black. I sent you. Day. I sent you a brown. I think it's a little too uh, dark. dark. I like it actually. I think you can go for it. Okay. Uh, water it down a little bit, Paul. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, water it down because we want to layer our darks up. Also, somehow a little purple got in my mix. I'm running out of ultramarine blue. However, here is the in my watercolor bin is the screwdriver that I lost last week. So <laughs> there's that. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> I just refreshed my blue and my um, my blue and my brown. So let's see if this gives us a different. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It'll get darker. See, Lisa, that's almost, oh, you can't really see here. That's almost dark. I'll put it up here so you can really see it. It gets super dark. And the paints are fresh. Get way dark. But a lot of this little, this, this uh, giraffe is kind of this orangey red color. Yeah, what color did you add at the end to make it darker? Um, just, for, it's just burnt umber and ultramarine blue. Okay. Yeah, here, I'll take a picture. I just, I just mixed it again. I took fresh paint, okay. which made it like a little bit stronger. And notice on the second layer, I can get in and get darker there. But for the most part, this giraffe is kind of a orangey brown color. Now my favorite orangey brown base is, what is it, Lisa? You know. Um, burnt sienna. Yeah, burnt sienna is a wonderful color. Here, I'm gonna pop it up here. This is just plain old burnt sienna, which is nice enough if you come here and see it, you can see it's a pretty color. Um, but this guy, we could add a little bit of cadmium red. I know, Mariana, you don't have cadmium red, but you know your sort of orangiest red? Oh, that, not too much, that was too much. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have cadmium red either. Yeah, what it, you have those terrible scarlet. like crimson lake and right like I have, I have crimson red and scarlet. Well, so what I'd like you guys to do is prep is do a couple of things on your test paper. So here, before you get started on your giraffe, I want you to start with basic burnt sienna. So this is burnt sienna, just plain old burnt sienna.
And then this is burnt sienna plus red, an orangey red. See what that does. Here's burnt sienna. I use a little cadmium, a lot of sienna. So now we've got a little bit more of a red tone. Try mixing a little bit of burnt sienna and yellow ochre or gamboge or yellow, just any yellow. This is, so give yourself some tests to kind of make this a little bit, this is burnt sienna plus yellow. And then for the kind of darky ones that are sort of in the shade, the darker spots, right? Like here and down here, those are, those are shaded. Try mixing a little burnt sienna and ultramarine blue, just a touch, not too much. Because these are the basic spot colors and they're kind of everywhere else too. Leah, burnt sienna, which red? I cannot read there. Uh, just uh, orangey red. Yeah, right, because I wrote it. Just an orangey red. I don't, if you have, have, we have, I don't have orangey red, I have orange. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm just saying, mm -hmm. I'm just saying any red that has a little bit of orange in it. Oh, okay, okay. There's not, it's not actually an actual color. I use cadmium red, but I think a lot of you guys don't have it. So, which one like, do you use? Cadmium red. Do you have that? I have crimson red. It's that's kind of you want an orangey red, a red that's uh, a little vermilion. bit more yellow. Vermilion red. Which yeah, I mean. yeah, vermilion would probably be okay. the closest. So add a little bit of red to it, right? So just see how these look differently. And notice this one is a little bit of, so this is burnt sienna plus yellow. This is burnt sienna plus a little bit of blue plus ultramarine blue, right? So that you can do your shadows. And then I think you're gonna be, so you just wanna be careful not to paint the white areas. And of course, if you want to paint, like if Victor wants to paint his painting or Victor's mom wants to paint his painting a different, you know, you're painting a different painting, you can totally do that. So now you can come in and start looking at the, the colors, you know, of your, you can make them brighter with yellow or red maybe even orange. Look on those spots. The spots that are kind of under the neck need a little bit of blue in the orange. You can also maybe add a little bit of burnt umber in with your burnt sienna to make it a little bit darker. Oh, I just noticed he's got a little fur mane too. That's also kind of yellow or reddish orange. Go ahead and get the spots in. And you can kind of mix up the colors a little bit. They don't all have to be the same. Some of the burnt sienna can have more red in it, right? Some can just be burnt sienna. Some can have more yellow in it.
just focus on the spots right now. We'll deal with the, the rest of the body and the face later, but just make those spot, spots kind of pretty colors. Or make them blue, for goodness sake. You don't have to do what I say. You can do whatever you feel like doing. I was actually thinking I might like to try a little bit of blue around the edge. take any color you want to go around the outside as well. So get the spot and then we'll figure out how to deal with the head. This is Thalo blue. Thalo blue is a color that used to really freak me out. I thought it was too unnatural looking and it bothers it's, uh, me it's blue bottle fly color <laughs> it is it totally is um and now i'm like totally into it i use it in all my paintings <laughs> just like Give yourself a chance to, a place to test your colors before you lay them on. Or if you feel like it, make him blue. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna quibble. I don't know. If you're wanting to do these colors, play around with the browns that you like, the sort of burnt sienna and all the pretty variations you can make by mixing other, other colors. I know I'm a little bit of a, a tough on the drawing because I really want you guys to get it, but I'd like to make sure these classes aren't totally stressful. <laughs> the end of the day, I don't want to stress you out more than you were before you started the class. <laughs> then it's kind of defeating the point. <laughs> so. so play around with the color. Okay. 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 Okay.
and send it over when you got some. Oh, I see somebody has. Oh, nice, Lisa. He's looking really cute. He's cute. I like it. So to me, I mean, if we want to be kind of, I, to me, it looks a little bit like, let me test here, kind of a yellowy in between. It's kind of like a, it's a very light watery on this area down here. Can you see how you guys I'm working? I'm using a very watered down yellow. To kind of go across his fur. It's definitely lighter in value than the spots. So even though, and I can put that up here too. So it's kind of a yellowy ochre, but if you don't have yellow ochre, like I just think maybe a very watery burnt sienna with a little yellow in it. Kind of putting it, you know, in truth, I'm really putting it most places, this kind of light yellow. I know, I know, he's not light yellow everywhere. I know that, but we're gonna layer the color up. So if you have yellow ochre, a very light yellow ochre. You can see I'm kind of stopping here. And then you can go over with burnt sienna and darker colors in the areas where he's darker. See how I'm just going over with the darker burnt sienna. Burnt sienna is a little bit darker and I'm using a little bit more paint and a little bit less water. So over here, I'm actually even brushing in some burnt sienna. If I want to, I can go in with a little burnt umber in a couple places. Oh yeah, that looks great, Paul. A burnt umber, so where it gets it. So basically we're really just using burnt sienna, burnt umber, blue, and some yellow and red. So see where it's slightly darker here around the edges of the nose, maybe. And over here. So as I start to work around, there's areas where it looks a little browner. I know we haven't got to the, um, I'm keeping this part of the nose fairly light, but the other side kind of darker. <laughs> looks like he has a little goatee. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> And then, so really, this is just burnt umber and burnt sienna in layers. We started with a really, or yeah, and yellow ochre. So we started with a light yellow ochre over everything except this light bit here. And then I'll show you how to mix the colors for the ears. And then I think you should add one color that has nothing to do with the real colors of this giraffe. And I will not tell you what that color is. I think you should put in a color that just makes you happy. Yeah, Paul, Lisa, this looks good. And you have about half an hour. So I want you to give yourself time. Um, this color, by the way, in the ears is gonna be burnt umber, ultramarine blue, very light. 
So the same color we used in the dark part, but super light, maybe a touch more blue than brown. See this? So I've got a, it kind of makes a gray when you put water in it, a little water in it. Here. Well, if I want to, um, if I want to, I can go back maybe. Give him a slightly darker mouth. I can come around here with my dark. I can darken in my eyes. I can darken my darkest areas. Oh my God. And I'm going to take pink. <laughs> this kind of ready pink, quinacridone red. And I'm going to put it, where am I going to put it? I'm going to like outline several. I'm going to add pink into his um, spots just because. So at the end of this exercise, I want you to add in a color that's totally not this giraffe at all and put it in a few places just for fun. You don't have to pick the color I picked. It could be blue, it could be green, it could be yellow. Mm -hmm. Let's see. That looks great, Lisa. Good job. See, Lisa, you're getting there. So what do I do after I've done, I've done the yellow ochre pretty much everywhere. Well, so now look at the areas that are darker and go okay. in darker. Yeah, with kind of burnt umber and brown, and then add in a color that's totally not the color of this wrap. If you have gouache, you can do this with gouache. And the gouache, will actually sit on top. So I think I even have this crazy light blue color. I'll show you. If I wanted to, here is blue and gouache and here is white and gouache. So see how I'm mixing this crazy turquoise color? I'm gonna put that in a few of my dots too my spots why the heck not so i want you to have a little fun with this as well i want you to add a color that's absolutely not the color that you see in parts of the giraffe i'm gonna put a little bit of blue here Ooh, actually Outline. You don't have to use the colors I'm using. You could use, you could be green, you could be pink, you could be purple. I just want you to pick one color that's not the giraffe color and put it in in a few places. Well, that looks kind of awesome. If I do see so myself. If you have white gouache, you can kind of put the little white bits, you know, back into the eyes. You can also kind of have a little bit of white over the top. It doesn't tend to work as well.
Am I going too far? Maybe. <laughs> but how you know that you're going too far until you've done it? So I want to encourage you to, to play around with this. I want you to play with this concept. We have the giraffe. Now let's um let's have some fun coloring in there. You know what I think I should not have put the yellow where the whites are. Oh, I put it all throughout. I didn't look. Yeah. That's okay. Happens. You can try using gouache to replace some of that white, but um, you know, basically we're still just trying to create values. Here, so as long as everything is lighter here than it is anywhere else. Oh my God, I kind of like them with the colors. Makes me want to add more color, like a little purple in the shadows. Now that you've kind of have gotten, like Lisa, at the stage that you're at, now is the time you can get a little bit more fun with color. As long as you get kind of darker in some areas and lighter than others, it doesn't really matter what color you use. Uh, the challenge with watercolor is to maintain your lights, right, and darks, and to um, make sure that your light, that your values match your colors, right? Whatever color you're using, it's a light value color or a dark value color. Let's take a picture of this. Here's my giraffe. <laughs> maybe the blue looks a little silly, but maybe it's all right. I don't know. One of our new, uh, another one of our new um, participants uh, who was in our abstract art class told me that it was very important to her that she feel actually right. You know what I mean? Like she's correct rather than wrong <laughs> all the time. And that's why she wanted to do art. And I thought, okay, she's got a point. Um, I'm doing a lot of correcting of you guys, and I want to make sure that you also have this time to play and feel like whatever you're doing is right. So I'm going to try and incorporate more of that into particularly the painting aspect of things. Um, because I want you to feel right with what you're doing. I want it to feel good. 
I want you to learn to trust your decisions or, you know, you make a decision and then you're like, oh, okay, I'm not going to make that decision to get right <laughs> like based on the results. So I want you, I want this to be a really good experience besides the fact that you're learning something. By the way, how was everybody's day? How was your day? Lisa just made a terrible face when I said that. <laughs> what, was it bad? No, I just, I traveled. I was on a plane in DC at 9 a.m., which was Ugh. so. What were you doing in DC? Pacific. Well, that's where, that's the closest, well, not the closest, but that, that's where we, my mother in law is four hours from there. So that's where we just flew back today. Four hours from DC. Where is she? She's in the middle of nowhere. That's the thing. Is she in Virginia? She's in is in a little she... town called Deltaville, Virginia. Wow. Is um a town of five thousand people, I think. Hmm. Um, which, yeah, and I mean that. I think that might be the summer population because it's on the water. People go boating down there in the winter. It's, it's even more empty. Wow, that's fantastic. So, um, yeah, so we drove up to DC last night and then took our flight back this morning. Got it. I'm a little groggy, and I actually was going to skip class tonight until I saw this cute giraffe, and I was like, <laughs> I have That's to go the idea. that giraffe. You can thank Mariana for that. She gave me the idea. <laughs> um, I'm glad you come even when you're tired. I know, no, I know I that too. Cool. And I really, once again, I looked at this giraffe and thought there's no way I can do that, but I've done but it. You did it. You're doing it. Gonna, I'll send you. Yeah. Send me where you're at. I am my phone. We have about 15 minutes left. You guys can keep working if you want to play around with it. Oh, I love his little purple background. <laughs> yeah, so Lisa, add another color in the actual giraffe anywhere that is not actually the color of the giraffe, but matches a value. Okay. Any color at all. Just start putting some color in without thinking too hard about it. Can it be the purple? You can do whatever you want. If that's what you wanna do, do it.
Paul, Mariana, how was your days? Have a good day today. Um, today was a weird day. How so? Uh, just uh, I was I had uh, I had a scare with my my mom yesterday, so I had to take her to to the hospital. She th she thought she broke her hip, but she just bruised it pretty badly. So, that sucks. She was, she but she's panicked. okay. She's fine. Yeah, yeah. It was there was not, nothing happened. It was just a uh, false alarm, I guess. But I was stuck at the uh, the hospital for until twelve thirty at night. That sounds kind of terrifying. Yeah. I'm sorry about that, but she's better today. Yeah, she's fine today. She's got a walker, so. Shit. The indignities of I mean, getting old. Be, I know she'll it be back sucks to herself in about, a, about seven days, but in the meantime. Mariana, how was your day? Busy? It was fine. It was not so busy. Uh, doing tanker tracking. <laughs> <laughs> really? Victor, did you go to school to today? Victor, how was school today? He, he had Yay. his allergy test removed. Um, yeah. He has had a lot of allergies, so we went to the doctor and he, they put some bottles that look like a robot on him. Yeah, but now they take it off. And they took it off. And Nick, and Nick, and Friday they can lose them. Now we can go back there. We have to go back there on Friday. Yeah, you have to go back there Friday. Okay. And I don't know if the doctor like Ron and me is gonna bring some Cheetos and but, and feed uh, him. <laughs> yeah, so he thinks he thinks that because we think he's allergic to artificial colorants. Uh, they're gonna actually give him Cheetos for for, for testing. Who's <laughs> <laughs> <That's fun. laughs> Cheetos for testing. I love it. Victor, how old are you? Six, seven. Six. Six. You are a smart fellow. You know that. <laughs> I am kind of good in bow. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it on, boys. I'm very humble. <laughs> I'm very humble. <laughs> and I want to be hungry like a normal five minutes. Five minutes and I say I'm hungry. Uh, yeah, he's so real the time. Yeah. Excellent. All and right, so I want you guys to work for another like five minutes. And then uh, share what you've got. And then we will go our separate ways. And I want you to keep thinking about what you'd like to learn. I want you to think of fun classes and fun class subjects, all kinds of skills. And we'll see what we can do because Reuters was really generous this year, I will say. They were great. And the LA Press Club.
Just so oh, you know. yeah, Lisa. Oh, yeah. See, this is great. Yeah. Yeah. Right. This would be an amazing drawing subject. I'm actually thinking we might draw it. Anyway, keep, yes, send me a few. Okay. I want to see a few. And if we can paint them, we will. I'm going to play around with this, this idea of painting a simplified face. I'm going to think about it and see if I can, I just have to think about it, like how to structure it. All right. Oh yeah, that's a neat one too. That looks so great out there. Did you spend a lot of time out there? Or was it too oh, cold? Yeah. No, it's too cold. No, we were inside, but, but you know, there's plenty of big windows to appreciate. Uh, the I bet. It's amazing. All right, everybody, do you want to? uh anybody want to show victor have you been drawing with your mom do you want to show do you just want to hold up your painting at the end here i can put you guys in gallery view 